Hey, welcome again. This video is the second of a series of videos covering the basics of GSAP. So, as I have already covered two of the fundamental parts of GSAP, which are Twin Light and Twin Max, in this video I'm continuing with another two essential parts of the suite, which are Timeline Light and Timeline Max. Let's get started by creating an animation of the square 1 and square 2 swapping places using what we have already learned in the previous video. As you can see from the code I've just typed, I wanted the first square to go up and the third one to go down, then a translation on the x-axis had to happen and then another one on the y-axis, so the squares go back to zero on the y-axis, which we can see right now, because all of the changes are happening at the same time. So, if you want to see the steps one after the other, we need to delay each change so it can take place only after the end of the previous one. The delay of each sequence should be the same as the sum of the previous animation's duration. For a small animation like this, this should be enough, but for more complex animations, this could turn into a big unsolvable puzzle with a lot of unreadable and repetitive code and that's where Timeline Light and Timeline Max come in handy. Let's start by adding Timeline Light to the project. I'm going to use a CDN hosted version of Timeline Light. Keep in mind that is whether you're using Timeline Light or Timeline Max, you have to always add Twin Light or Twin Max to the project, else it will not work. First thing first, let's create a new instance of Timeline Light, then remove all the delays, that should be enough to create the sequence of the animations. We have control of when any of the sequences can take place. Let's say for instance that we want the second sequence to take place at 0 second from the beginning. As you can see now, the second sequence start at the same time as the first one. Let's do the same with the fourth sequence. We can also use the plus equal or minus equal sign to add a delay relative to the previous animation's end time. In this case, I used minus equal 1 which will make the change a second before the previous animation's end. So basically, both of the changes start at the same time. Minus equal 0 is the default behavior where there is no delay. Plus equal 1 means that the change occurs 1 second after the end of the previous change.
If I use a simple integer without the equal sign, that means the starting time of the change is relative to the start of the whole timeline. So, 1 here means the change has to occur 1 second after the start of the whole animation. We can reverse the animation by using the reverse method, so we can see the animation taking place from the end state to the initial one. There is also the play method which you can use to specify where exactly you want the animation to start, making it possible to skip some sequences. We can specify when an animation can take place despite of its order inside the code. Using delays in this case can be confusing as I mentioned earlier. That's why a handy method can be used to solve this problem, which is add label. As you can tell by its name, this method uses a label that figures in the chosen sequence, then use it as it's the real sequence taking place. Add label takes two arguments, the label name and the time where the sequence should trigger. Minus equal zero changes the order of the last animation to the third one. Using only zero makes it start at the very beginning, as you have already guessed, because using a simple integer without the equal sign makes the timing of the change static or relative to the beginning of the timeline as a whole. The label can be used also as a reference for the play method. We can nest a timeline inside another using the add method which can be useful for advanced and complex animations. Timeline Max is the big brother of the Timeline Light, if I can say. The relation between the two is the same as the relation between Twin Light and Twin Max. Timeline Max includes Timeline Light with more features, as you can see, even if I just got rid of the CDN link to Timeline Light, it still works, because I have already the link to Timeline Max.
The first additional feature provided by Timeline Max is Repeat, which repeats all of the sequences as many times as we want to. For instance, one will repeat the animation one more time after it occurs once. Two will repeat the animation twice after the initial occurrence. Negative one, though, will repeat the animation infinitely. Yo-Yo is another extra feature provided by Timeline Max, which will make the animation repeat from the starting state to the final one, and vice versa. With Timeline Light, we can specify at which point the animation trigger using the play method. But, what if we wanted the reverse of that? What I mean here is what if we wanted the animation to end at a certain point? Well, the answer is provided also by Timeline Max with the Twin2 method. We also can do both, meaning that we can specify where the animation can start and where it should finish, using the tween from to method. You can take a look at the documentation for way more additional methods and functions provided by the two timelines. And also to mention, there is a very powerful tool that makes debugging animation way easier which is the GS DevTools, but you should have a paid subscription to make use of it. This should be enough for this tutorial, so as always, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification, and see you in the next one.